All right. So, Jim, I'm just going to ask you questions. Okay. And if you can answer them for me, that's all I need from you. Okay. Just got to grab a pen. Okay. So, Jim, tell me just a brief history of your, or like a brief look into the his, your history with the society. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want me to lead up to that or not? Uh, however you want to tell. Go with it. Well, I, I think if, if you knew my um, first half of my life, you would know my, how, my last half of my life first. Because I was born in 1920, and uh, uh, seven, I'm the oldest of seven. And then we lived in a log cabin, and no water, no uh, electricity, and no plumbing. <laughs> and um, we slept on straw ticks. And then my dad had a, uh, a little farm. Mm -hmm. And uh, when Christ came in 29, he had, was able to sell his, uh, he had an acre, I mean, a, a section of land, and sold that. So he was there free. So we, we went into the Depression. Uh, debt free, which in those days uh, was hard. Everybody didn't have anything, so nobody thought they were poor. Uh, you know, because <laughs> we traded labor and we tr did all these different things, you know, to help uh, each other out to survive. And then um, my dad hired help, and we weren't. Uh, he wasn't rich enough to have a bunkhouse, you know, that's where they hired people live. So whenever he hired somebody, they lived with us. So I grew up living as a stranger <laughs> and so forth. So uh, that's kind of the, oh, and then um, I went to high school, graduated from the uh, agricultural school. My folks wanted me to be a farmer, I didn't want to be, but I, I took the course and, and learned how to build and how to repair machinery and so forth. So that helped when I got to be sick and so forth. And uh, I guess from there, uh, it was the depression and uh, uh, I graduated in 39 from high school. There was no jobs. So my dad wouldn't let me work for some rancher that would have hired me for a dollar a day, but he, he says he worked the hell I'm getting. So, so I joined the three C's in the National Forest, and I replanted the forest at the Halsey. And in uh, the wintertime, I got a job, well, I got a job at the blacksmith first, and then I got into the kitchen, and that was my, uh, life work really. So uh, from there, uh, I tried to get in Navy, I couldn't, I was colorblind. They enlisted in the service and they come out of the service and went to school and uh, uh, let's see now, after I got the service, I, uh, oh, I, I went, I came to Omaha to Rice and lived a couple of years. And we, Raised a family, five adopted children, and then, uh, and then uh, we moved to Lincoln in '52, uh, and and uh, always took in uh, students or people that needed a place to live while they were working in Lincoln and so forth. But these are all not street people, and then. Uh, uh, in uh, when I joined the St. Mrs. De Paul in the late 80s, uh, the first thing we did was study the manual. And, uh, and the city mission had uh, uh, been built, and so our pastor took us to, on a tour to the city mission. And uh, there was a little girl sitting in the waiting room and uh, uh, they told us that she came from Guatemala and she was an illegal and she couldn't speak English and they didn't know whether to turn around on the street or to 
send her, turn her over to immigration. And um, she uh, called the parish, uh, our parish, and, and we had a Spanish speaking secretary. So she called me and told me about this thing. And I said, Well, I saw her last night. So I told her I'd go out and get her. Well, she lived with us for two years. And, um, uh, and then, as uh, we kept studying the manual, uh, the uh, uh, Plymouth Congregational Church had a uh, minister that was in charge of the street people around town. And uh, she said, in another meeting, and then she asked me to be on her. Well, not, I might be getting ahead of you here, but anyway, this now I'm in St. Louis to go. Okay. So you jump in whenever you want. Uh -huh. I mean, you're, you're just, I'm here you're to perfect. hear your story. Okay. All right. Um, the city offered, uh, their, their name was Daywatch, and they had a place downtown, and they took care of the street people, but the city wanted them out of downtown. And uh, so, uh, and when I got on their board, uh, I found out that they were having a terrible, terrible time finding a place to take care of the street people. And uh, they'd been turned down 25 different times, me and me and so forth, you know. So I told them, I said, well, why don't you just let me find a place because nobody knows who I am. And uh, I found the uh, I tried to work with Mary O'Shea, whoever was Mary O'Shea, and the city wouldn't approve of, of the lot we wanted, and so there was a packing plant right in this area, and it was for sale, and the realtor found out I was looking for a place, and he told me he wanted 105000 for it, and he says, I think I'll take eighty five. So I offered him 75, thinking I wouldn't get it, you know. <laughs> sure enough, he accepts him right off of it. So I had to run to the bank and get the money because I didn't have any money. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the bank loaned me the money. And then we had a uh, little fundraiser with mail out mailings and we got some money. And then we were fortunate enough to get a, a loan at 2%. and. Uh, so then uh, I deeded the, the property over to St. Vincent Hall. And uh, we were able to make the payments. And the scripture says you have to count your costs, you know, before you. But I figured that we, we could handle it because they held me responsible. For it. It a lot of people didn't approve <laughs> of what I was doing, but I was the president, so I. I took the liberty, I guess, and uh, um, uh, they said they gave the day was 25000 so I let them have a part of it. And Matt Talbot, they were a, a group of people who took care of alcoholics, said, because there was no place downtown for the alcoholic street alcoholics to meet, you know, so they wanted uh, a piece of it. And so I give a watch a part and Matt Teller a part, and the rest of it was the same as well. We had a store and we had, but uh, and then we got another anonymous gift of 50000 and uh, we uh, finished uh, building it. It was just a flat slab where they had the previous room, so we had to build a the wall all the way around it and the roof and so forth. And we done that and, uh, and then from there we, uh, these people here were developing their own and then in order for me to give them a match of 25,000, I matched in rent. So, you know, I did not put out your money. And uh, it kept growing and growing and growing and we got to, store and then of course it was a store committee and my six years was up and so I kind of 
got out of it except for still being active and picking up furniture. And mm -hmm. So, so that's kind of our, how it is up to that point. Awesome. And let me know anytime you want to take a break, okay? Okay. All right. I've got a list of questions here for you. Um, can you tell me a little bit about Patty Gardner? Patty Gardner? Mm hmm Yeah, she was a gal from Guatemala. That, that oh, you already told me about her. No, but she didn't. Yeah, she lived with us for two years. Uh, she uh, uh, finally, um, one of the other Vincentians in our uh Congress at St. Mary's. Uh, after the, uh, she was a single lady, and uh, she said, "Why don't you let Patty live with me for a while? You've had her all these <laughs> years, you know." And so I said, "Okay." So Patricia went and lived with other gal, and of course they started bar harp and pop bar and or whatever you call it. And um, she wasn't getting help, so I. I tried to send her up to uh, Canada because uh, the Canadians have a better uh, system for for people, immigrants, and so forth than the United States did. But uh, she got as far as Minneapolis, and uh, she met somebody there, and uh, uh, they told they sent her back to Lincoln. They told her not to go. So there she was, and then of course this lady took her. Eventually she. Found a man that got married, and then they had a little boy, uh, Joseph, and he went to St. Mary's with Pius X. And now he's out on his own. He's a, a uh, night watch or guard for some company. But she has uh, liver cancer, and uh, uh, she's trying to get a transplant. She been going back and forth to Omaha to make sure it isn't in her lungs, and they mm -hmm. said it wasn't in her lungs. But of course, a lot of those people from that part of the world have hepatitis, and, and uh, so I don't know. She's taking treatment for her liver, but it, it's it's hard to get a liver transplant. Yeah, she's too much of a liver. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, is it true that you served with General Patton in the army? Yes, uh, Third American Army. I was in the, the infantry. Uh, I was drafted. I went to uh, to on the join the cadre. You know what a cadre is? I don't. Okay. Well, a cadre is a battalion or a, a part of an army. And it was in uh, Kentucky, uh, 81st, 80th Infantry Division. And of course, from Broken Bow, close to where we lived, uh, they sent us to Denver. And they found out on my record that it, from the C three C's that I was cooked. So I, I cooked all on all the two trains uh, clear across the United States. I went, uh, we did our boot camp in. The, in Kentucky and Tennessee, the, I don't know what those mountains are, Blue Ridge Mountains. And then uh, from there we went to um, Salina, Kansas, did our rifle training. We went from there to Yuma, Arizona, and did our desert maneuvers. Robinson was still in Africa at that time. But before we got back to New Jersey, we, Rommel had been defeated, and so uh, we went into the continent to D plus 30. And uh, we joined Patton's Army. Uh, well, really, we were in Patton's Army, I guess, before we went overseas, because I was in the 318th Infantry. And uh, we went in D plus 30, and our first battle was at Ring, France. And, and I don't know if you know George Patton, but he didn't end up war over with you. Know, <laughs> you know, he, because he liked to move, and of course, he used him as a decoy. I didn't know that until uh, some of the films that came out. Uh, so 
the Seventh Army and the First Army, uh, I think, went into the continent before we did. But then, uh, we went in, of course, we went to Luxembourg, Belgium, um, Germany, and I think as far north as Germany we got was uh, Frankfurt. And then we went down towards Austria, and that's where we went to the Russians. See, Stalin and Rommel and and uh, the British man, what was it? Montgomery. Montgomery, yeah. Uh, they uh, had a little get together there in Egypt or someplace and decided to. <laughs> that uh, the Americans and the British couldn't get into Russia. They wanted Russia to come. And that's what's caused a lot of our problems. <laughs> we, uh, anyway, we met the Russians down in, in Innsbruck, Austria. And then from there, uh, I did six months uh, occupation duty at Munich, Mutual, and. And they said us, I got to come home in October 45 or something. I was there three years. Oh, wow. So you were a cook in... Yeah, a cook. And that, what that means is uh, you carry ammunition, you do more duty, you, uh, <laughs> you do everything but cook. Well, uh, <laughs> you, you issue, issue rations, you know. We had, uh, but the only time we could cook was when the, there'd be a truce or... <laughs> Uh, uh, patenting because that get so far ahead and uh, he'd have to wait. And uh, we were in the Black Horse, and um, uh, my captain he says, uh, Why don't you get uh, something, a meal for these guys? So I got my Jeep driver, and I said, Okay, so we went out and shot a cow, and brought it in, and butchered it. And, I got a, a three meals out of that cow, <laughs> and we could see the Germans across the the valley there. You know, the, they were probably the, jealous. They were probably hungry. Uh, yeah, and so that was about the only time I cooked. But like I mentioned at the our last uh, Congress meeting, you know, I was carrying ammunition, and they. The shells were exploding on all around me, you know. And I, I said, uh, why me, God? Because there's a lot of young boys that have had families, you know. But anyway, I was kind of, I was unharmed. I got, in the Battle of Bastogne, we got the uh, presidential citation. And I had four battle stars. They are not stars, they were called a battle. Right. Okay. They don't have ever. And a uh, bronze star with a cluster. And, uh, and then when they can. Do I stop there? No, come on. No, keep going. Uh, then we, when I got out of there, I went, uh, got home, and there was no jobs and bakeries around. Broken Bow had a CI training, but he. He never would respond, so I went to Washington, D.C. and took a short course in cooking and hotel management and so forth. And then I saw that was a dead end, so I was looking for a baking school, and the, the army was supposed to be able to give you soldiers counseling when they get out, you right. know, to help them get situated. And finally, I found this school in Oklahoma. Of long ago, ago when I was a, a baking school, and so I, and that's where I met my wife, and so I went, got a job in Omaha, and uh, as a baker, yeah, in a baker, okay, and uh, and uh, we wrote letters back and forth, and uh, she wanted to get married in the next year. Then she wrote me and said, no, she wanted to get married in the well. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't want to wait. Didn't want to wait. So we got married on Thanksgiving Day in Okmongi, Oklahoma. Oh. And then, uh, of course, after that, uh, we wanted a family. We right. 
in the first few years, we didn't have anything, so we started adopting. And uh, we adopted interracial children because my wife and her father was from Japan, her Japan, her mother was from Spain. So in those days, they tried to match the children with the parents, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's how we get into it. So I have a Native American, I have a, uh, uh, the next one was a Spanish, and oh, the oldest one, yeah, she was a Native American and Spanish, I guess. And then the next one was Spanish, and then the social worker that was taking our case, she said, well, we need to get something it looks like you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so they gave us a little, uh, little girl, and she was white, uh, but uh, she still had uh, the American blood in her, because uh, we found that out later. So how many daughters and how many sons do you have? I have four, uh, four uh, sons and two daughters. Oh, wow. And they're, and they're all adopted? All, all adopted, awesome. yeah. And then the, the last two... One is mulatto and one is uh, black. He, uh, his mother came from uh, Latvia. You don't remember the DPs? You don't remember no, the DPs? I don't. They Displ are dis displaced persons. Yeah, okay. <laughs> displaced persons. Well, anyway, she was a noble one. And she met up with this black guy. And, of course, they put their, put the little guy in the orphanage. They used to have an orphanage. And, uh, so that's, then my wife said, well, that's enough. We got, <laughs> We've got <laughs> a good so, brood. So, and now, uh, you know, see, my oldest son, he adopted, uh, two, see, he adopted one or two. And then my next son, he adopted two. And his uh, daughter is on the university soccer team. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. She's been very... Very active in that, and, and then my youngest son. Now he's uh, he took off on his own. They were working all together, you know, as a family. And he wanted to shop on his own, so he's got one. Day. All right. So you helped form the conference that you were a part of, correct? Well, yeah. I, um, there was a guy from St. Louis or Missouri or someplace came to the Lake of Nebraska and he was uh, in the food food distribution business. And uh, he couldn't believe that there wasn't a serious fall society in Lincoln in the diocese. So he went to Bishop Plavin and of course, Bishop Flavin came to St. Louis, and so he was uh, very uh, firm and even willing to get it started. So uh, we had uh, the people from Omaha, the president of the, the, the council in Omaha, came to Lincoln and, and um, taught us how to function as a as a St. Louis society. Uh, conference and so forth. And then um, we had uh, a meeting and we, we got St. John's, uh, uh, and St. Mary's, uh, in order to form a, um, a um, council we had in three. Then we were aggr when we were aggravated, then we got to, to have our uh, uh, council in others. The first council president. Mm -hmm. So your council was made up of St. Mary's, St. Yeah, just St. Mary's. Yeah. Well, we had St. Mary's, St. John's, and St. Uh, Blessed, Blessed, Blessed Sacrament for your Sacrament. council, and you were yeah, the St. Mary's we, conference. And then the cathedral and um, and um, St. Pat's and Blessed Sacrament. They all come on later. Um, so that's how that started. Now, had you? been introduced to the society prior to trying to start your, prior to your work to start it here? I had no idea about St. Louis de Paul. I'd I, I done all the things the same body, 
St. Vincent does. You <laughs> Just know. not under the St. Vincent and when name. When I was growing up, and uh, uh, Father Gideon was uh, one of our pastors before uh, um, Father Witt came, I think. You know, it, or maybe it was later. I guess it was later because uh, he said, well, now you've got some help. <laughs> anyway, um, we we just sort of were under training the first year. That's when we, our council was, the, the conference. And we went through the manual and we did a few calls. I think we spent the first year, we only spent $800. That's of course, the four or five years later, it was in the thousands. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I needed, I thought we needed a truck, you know. Because we were hauling seven pickups and on top of cars and <laughs> so forth, you know, and tied mattresses to the roof of your car. <laughs> and so the, uh, the council of uh, Lincoln Council of Churches, <coughs> uh, I don't remember the man's name, but he was, uh, I think he belonged to Plymouth Congregation too. He said he'd get a grant for us. So he got us a grant and got us a truck. So uh, <coughs> we got our truck and then the, yeah, I'd go to the council meetings and some of my co-workers and said, you don't need a truck. And we did need a truck, you know. <laughs> and, I, and so it went on that way for a while. So what year did your conference start? Oh, in the 80s, uh, 80, I don't know whether we were congregated. I was going to ask Father for our, our abrogation. abrogation, but I didn't. I think it's 87, Jim. I yeah. Think, I think I saw document that incorporated yeah. everything. You know what, and I can probably find yeah, it that's on cool. our database. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and you've been, so, and then what, you've obviously, you served as president? Yeah, I, I served as president and secretary, and I, I never served as treasurer. I, uh, uh, I probably served as president maybe a couple of times, you know, yeah. Lay off six years, I think, of what the rule is. So you went back as many times as you could? I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to do the work. I didn't, I, I'm not a, it's not one of my pluses. You're not in it for the recognition. No, I just, I didn't. But, uh, so tell me about the Vietnamese people that you sponsored for jobs. Oh, I, that was in the early 80s. I, I sponsored 35, my wife and I did. And um, I found out early on that, um, you know, because of climatic conditions and from the two countries, uh, that the election bless her and John and so forth, so, uh, because I'd get them a place to live and they wouldn't like it, you know. So I thought, the heck with that noise, I'll just bring them home and they can stay for a week or so and they can find their, what they like, you know. And uh, so that worked out real well because uh, he wants to stop or? I think we're good. Hi. Oh. Hi, Jim. Well, hi there. Surprise. Surprise. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't tell me I was going to get something to eat. Oh, no, no, no. I told you what to eat. Nice to meet you, Denise. I'm Michelle. Oh, sorry, Hi, Denise. nice to meet you. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. Well, what a day of, you know, <laughs> weather. I know. Are you gonna, is she going to be able to get home tonight? Maybe she should think we'll about getting another no, flight. No, it'll be going by tonight. No, nah, you um, won't. Yeah, well. No. So you won't. just messed up the story. Oh. <laughs> Leave it to me and mess it yes, up. Yes, you did a good job. Anyway, um, I'd uh, get my job right away and uh, get a place to live and, and uh, so forth. And uh, the last two, I uh, 
the last two I sponsored, Father Walsh, he was the head of Catholic Church, so he was the head of the uh, immigration, you know, part of the government. So. And these two boys, uh, he told me that he just had two people left, and they wonder if I take them. I said, oh, yeah, I'll take him. So I, they were just in high school age, so I brought them to the bakery, and I had an apartment up at the bakery. We lived there, we worked in the bakery, we went to the southeast. And then, um, then they left, and went, one of them went to Omaha, and one of them went to Chicago, I think. And they got started in the grocery business, you know, that's what their, their thing is. And then, so uh, this one boy, he, uh, he married, he had a nurse up there, and they got married, and they asked uh, my wife and I to come and uh, fill in as our parents, you know, for the wedding. And, uh, you know, he still writes to me every Christmas. And the kids are all grown up, they're going through college, and he's retired, and I'm still playing and all of <laughs> Anyway, uh, that's one of the uh, stories about it. Another story was uh, I had this uh, young couple and she was pregnant. And uh, uh, I got them a, an apartment there on 16th Street and next to Ohio. And, uh, and then there was two girls from St. John's. They said, you know, we'd like to do this. Can you let us take that? This family, and I said, well, you can know, sure, I'll share it with you. <laughs> no big deal. So anyway, uh, they helped uh, sponsor him, and when uh, he left, uh, most of them, this part, Nebraska is not the place for me to be. So they stay here a while, and they go south, and they go west, and you got to have warm weather. <laughs> and um, anyway, she had her baby, and, and they moved to California, and, and then, this one gal that still is in contact, she went out to see him, I think, last summer or summer before. They always ask uh, how Jim is, you know. <laughs> and uh, so he's got his family's grown up, and of course he was Cambodian, and um, he started a church for the Cambodians there somewhere in Northern California, but that was a nice family too. So. So the kids who asked you to sub for their parents were Vietnamese? Oh, yeah. I did, uh, we substituted for the parents for um, another a Chinese family. Oh, okay. And uh, these were, um, well, they were both Chinese. Okay. But uh, the one that lived in Omaha, he still lives there. Okay. And, uh, uh, they wanted me to be in grace to uh, sub for their parents, so we did. Because their parents couldn't come over for the ceremony? Oh, yeah, well, they yeah, they were displaced. Oh, right, okay. Uh, anyway, this other family that uh, that I t took uh, and stayed a week when they first came here because uh, they didn't like the part with that big car, so I had to live with them. Well, when their daughter, and their daughter, I, had, I gave her a job. She worked in the bakery. And um, when she got married, she got married to a, um, a midshipman or, a, I don't know what they call it, from South America. But uh, they wanted us to come the way too. But you see, the Chinese, they, the way they get married, uh, you get a sack full of oranges, and then you, you, you that's what they give <laughs> Grace and I, a sack full of oranges. And we were outside the house, so we come into the house, and then the parents go into a room with a couple that's getting married, mm -hmm. and they get married, and that's all. That's all. So there's not a big audience, it's just the four of them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, uh, and then, uh, I guess that's the end of the bed and weeds. Um, now, and you, so you also had some Syrians in your home as well. Syrians? Yeah, I, 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 you know, there was an air pilot 
his, uh, his wife, I think she's their pilot too. I don't know whether they, they belong to uh, the parish south of town or not, but um, he had money and of course he knew me and uh, he, he came to me to Baker and he said, I got this family that needs help. And, I said, well, why don't you help him, you know? Anyway, you want to know if I can help him? I said, well, sure, I'll help him. And so the mother was here, and uh, she had uh, three children, and uh, they tried to get into Christian school. They, one of the, they were, they were all doctors and dentists. One is the dentist's friend, and the, the other was a doctor. He, he works in some of the rest homes here in town. But uh, before they came, the mother was here with the three kids, and I was trying to give them food and so forth, and, you know, help them survive until the family got together. Now, um, one daughter, she's in med school, and the other, the oldest boy, he's in Omaha, he's getting married this summer. And, so anyway, I was that kind So you do, you've, in, you've been involved in helping all of these international people. Tell me a little bit about the work you do with um, some of the people, you know, nationally, locally, um, through your pris prison ministry and stuff like that. Well, uh, uh, one other story was that uh, part of the teacher used to be there in charge of Catholic Center here in Lincoln. Uh, he had a, a young boy that was didn't have a family. He was in Boys Town, and uh, he wanted to know if I'd train him or teach, give him a job. So I said, "Yeah, I'll take him." He was just just a young kid, and uh, he was Spanish. And, uh, I trained him as a baker, and then he went back to a Boys Town, got a job, and he eventually got to be head of the department. So. Uh, what little I did for him wasn't much for me, but it was made a lot to him. And, and, uh, and then, let's see, a lot of the referrals would come from Catholic social you know. What was your question? I forgot. Well, kind of like your prison ministry, you've had people oh, work yeah. for you. My wife used to belong to, to the Legion of Mary. And she, go around and visit these people in hospitals and she run into this one guy that uh, was in the hospital for something and she asked him if he'd like to be visited. He was, uh, his grandmother raised him, he was from New York, he was in trouble from age 14 to, uh, he was a young adult and so we got permission. She couldn't go by herself. She had to take me with her. You know, had to go, husband and wife. And so we visited him for probably a year or so, and then finally encouraged him to get out. I had to go before the parole board. I had to go before the big shot and the, run the prison. You know, and he asked me, uh, mm -hmm. Why, do you know anything about this guy? And I said, no. And I said, well, what if he did this? I said, I just turned my other cheek. You know, I, I felt like I knew the guy enough to, to trust him. So he lived with us for a year. He worked for uh, Holiday Inn, got a job. And um, finally, he uh, wanted to leave the house. As long as he was living with us, everything was okay. But, he got out and got an apartment with another guy. He went to Grand Down and robbed a bank in her art. <laughs> and so he was back in jail. And he felt so bad because he had let us down that he didn't uh, he didn't contact us for a while. But eventually he did because uh, he got a job uh, as a cleaning man, and I'd see him every once in a while. But he eventually died, and, and the, his wife. Uh, at the funeral, uh, she thought just to take care of it. And you've had numerous people who you've brought in to work for you at the bakery. Well, yeah, uh, 
you got to give them a job. If they get out of prison, and there's no job and no place to go, you know, they'd be right back. So I, I, whenever I take, I've got two prisoners living in my apartments now. I got one prisoner that's working for me. He's worked for him for nine years. I got him out two years at any time. And uh, so, you know, they're human just like we are. And what, what do you, why do you feel like you're drawn to do this? What makes you so passionate about this? Corporal works mercy. Is that an answer? <laughs> that, that, that's as good an answer as any. Um, I, let's, let's take a yeah. look. You hungry? Yeah, I, well, I'm not hungry. I never get hungry. But you'll eat any of them. But you'll eat. Eat it's warm, so you got to eat. Oh, okay. The thing that people want to hear about. Okay, well, I, I think there's too many people. The government has spoiled the people. They, they just give them they too much, and they depend on the government. If they can't get it from the government, they'll come to St. Mr. Paul and try to get it from them or some other agency, and there's no incentive for them trying to, to make it on their own. They, you know, they just think we, we owe them a livelihood, mm -hmm. and uh, that's the difference. And, you know, in my early days, we, uh, there was no government uh, subsistence, and the, we didn't expect any because it wasn't there, but um, we, uh, we all survived. The people that had a hard time would go to California uh, or, you know, to look for a better life. Uh, but uh, the ones that stuck stayed at home and, uh, you know, we were able to raise enough to live on. Uh, We'd eat uh, jackrabbits and squirrels and, and things that people wouldn't even think of today. <laughs> you know, but uh, uh, if um, if you told somebody to uh, they needed some meat to bring them a squirrel, oh man, they'd throw that squirrel at you. <laughs> you know, they, they sure would. Uh, yeah, it's too bad the government. We got to get the government out of it. Uh, and this uh, and uh, and I'm sure the Pope uh, Francis is, uh, thinks that way too. I mean, he he thinks that we sh there should be more sharing, uh, you know, so that people do have food at least because uh, they're entitled to food. But uh, most of them. Uh, are of the world, not, you know, we're in the world, but not of it. That's the way that the Vincentians and Christians are supposed to be. Right? What, what do you think the people that we do home visits for now, if we were to say, we have a job for you, compared to when you, in fact, either gave them a job or looked for a job, tried to place them. Isn't there a difference in the people that we serve now? Oh yeah, when I was uh, helping the Vietnamese, uh, I'd take them to a place for, to get them a job and uh, they'd say, well, he, 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 doesn't, uh, he doesn't know our system or he doesn't know this or doesn't know that. I said, I'll work with him until I'll, I'll prove to you that he can do the job. And of course, then it's hard, you know, because it didn't want me showing up. <laughs> but, um, and then I had a young lady that was the seamstress, and uh, I tried to get her a job, and I took her to uh, one of the dry cleaners here, John. And uh, they wouldn't hire her, they said that uh, she probably didn't know the system or something. I said, well, what would it take if I. Uh, I just hired you to, to to give her a chance to work. So they agreed to that. They didn't pay her, but they gave her a chance to learn to be a seamstress, which she already was. 
But the, you can't do that with Viva now. They wouldn't do it. But that's what I always tell people. Uh, you need any help? I'll give you a job. If you want to work, okay. If you don't, you know, go somewhere else. Okay, so you're... I'm tough. <laughs> <laughs> no, I... <laughs> No, I, I, um, I have been tough with some people, um, but you know, it, they got to shape up and ship out. And oh, especially for as a man in the house, you know. And that's, uh, that's, and the man's there just to take advantage of the, the woman. He's not there to, to support him or anything. You know, if a man, even if he's got a 30-hour-a-week job or two jobs, he got to be able to buy enough groceries to take care of what he has got their wife or a woman and two kids. You know? mm -hmm. But they, they don't see it that way anymore. They want to do, well, have their fun. They want to have their, it's me, 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 mm -hmm. and let somebody else say, do you think that's one of the biggest problems yeah. with society today, is that everyone yeah. so... Well, and, and these men will uh, tell the girls, uh, go get help from St. Mary's Power. Go get help from Lincoln Action. Go help the, You know, I know they do that. How could we... How could we serve the poor better here in Lincoln? Or anywhere? Well, uh... I always felt like uh, to know somebody you had to work with them or live with them. Otherwise, you, <laughs> they can pull all kind of wool over your eyes. But um, I tell you, if, if there's a man around the house or if there's a woman that can uh, work, I, I try my best to find her a job. That's what uh, I've always done. I, been very successful too. Of course, I, I was doing it in a time where they would work. You know, nowadays they don't want to work. You see the difference, man. Yeah. I mean, you were a job search. You were your own job search company, right? Yeah. You were an employment agency. Yeah, that's right. And I, I trained a lot of people. I even trained people uh, for, on government programs. I used to have a program where they would try to teach people a, 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 a trade or a, a skill, and uh, it, it finally disappeared, but it's coming back. I think they're going to, the government is going to try to train people to, to get back in the workforce. So you're helping people find jobs all over, not just at your bakery. Oh yeah, no, no, so, I, I'm just a small mom and pop bakery, and you know, I can't, I can't give a job to everybody. So what 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 do you look for in these people that you're employing? Is there certain qualities? Well, I, I try to find out what their skills are, okay. and, um, and go from there, you know. And uh, when you, while you're doing that, you get to kind of learn a little bit about them. You, you know who they are, and if they're really serious about working. You know, I've offered people to. Uh, Take a job. I'd give them half, and they deserve half. So, but they wouldn't do it. So you know what's going on. So that's when. So if they're not willing to do the work, then if they're not willing to put the work in, then you're not. No, Saint Paul says you don't work, you don't eat. <laughs> and we're kind of afraid to tell people that, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't work, you don't eat. You know. the, the difference now, though, is that they can find somewhere to eat. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's now, right. Now we're not talking about eating. We're talking about yeah. internet. We're talking about cable TV. We're talking about phone service. We're talking mm -hmm. about cars. We're talking about a variety of things now. Yeah. Well, I... Um, I have a ring, that's about, and a shirt and the pants, that's about all I have. So what I give, 
isn't anything material as it is uh, trying to help them help themselves. You know? But um, it just doesn't seem to work that way anymore. I, I've taken in people. I took a black man in by the two check when we take him in. He was at the city mission and and. Uh, well, the church he got to take him because uh, he was Catholic and this and that. And so I said, yeah, I'll take him. Well, he'd uh, use a computer. My, my wife used to do the bookkeeping part of the business. And she had a computer, a computer at home. And he'd get on that and he'd get several offers for jobs. He wouldn't answer them. They'd call on the telephone and want to get a hold of him and for an interview because he came from Africa and he was a teacher and he had a son in Texas and uh, but he wouldn't answer and he'd get up in the morning throw the towel on his shoulder and walk into the bathroom and act like the king <laughs> but he, <laughs> he wouldn't really wouldn't respond to the calls he was getting for jobs. So I told him finally, I said, you got to get going. You're, you're just in here. And he was staying at your house? He was staying at our house, yeah. That's, you'd think he'd be a little more gung-ho, but I guess sometimes people just aren't that motivated. A lot of the referrals I got, you know, for people that were homeless or, in Catholic Church service, they bothered to ask me to get somebody who didn't have a place to live. And I know if I keep them for two weeks, uh, two weeks it turned into six weeks. And I had this one woman, she had three little, two little boys and a little girl. And these little boys are always crawling all over me, you know, because uh, they missed their dad, I'm sure, because she was uh, from Oregon. She came here because her mother died. And uh, she was going to Catholic church there, but she was going to provide her with a home, but they couldn't find a place for her. And so Father asked her if I'd keep her, and she was the one who was supposed to only stay two weeks, and she was going like four or five. And finally she got tired of waiting and went back to Oregon. So her and her children stayed with you? What's that? Her and her children stayed with you? Or just her? No, 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 the whole family, the, oh. the two little boys and the, and the little girl. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And then they went back to Oregon? Yeah, they went back they to Oregon. They, uh, the, the, little, the little boys went to cathedral to the school there, and because uh, I get bills for their uh, schooling, and I, I wasn't paying, them, yeah. paying the bills for them, but uh, I, I did try to to help her as much as I could. But uh, she was, had the ability to, uh, she must have been, uh, oh, I know she's Native American, because her, her mother had a Bible. She left the Bible at the house. And, uh, I don't know what the, what the name was, Whitehall or White Horse or what, you know, so Native American name. And then she went to Oregon. How did she get to Oregon? She drove. She oh, had she a had car. A car. Okay. okay. Yeah. So she had, you know, she had, uh, evidently she had somebody. I don't know where she got it from. But I didn't give her any money, and I just give her food and shelter and a uh, place to sleep. So. What excites you? What? What, what do you get excited about, besides <laughs> besides decorating a cake? Tell well, us I, a little bit about that. You know, I, um, Father Wet was uh, had St. Vincent Paul for 20 years, you know, and he, he would, um, people would come to the house. We were downtown Paris, you know, in the inner city, mm -hmm. and the bus people used to be down here in the church and up here, so they truck on down to the parish and and uh, when I'd, I'd help, I'm an acolyte and so I'd help with the mass at noon 
And I come in the back door and I'd see a suitcase there. And I'd say, uh oh. <laughs> Here's another one. So then father would say, Well, Jim, I got somebody that needs uh, some help. And he says, I told her to be here after Mass and you talk to her. I said, Okay, okay. He takes me back. And then in one case, he, um, she was in, uh, she is from Massachusetts, that's where she came from. Um, she, uh, he introduced me to her and, and she said, I won't talk to anybody but a, but a priest. And he said, you talk to this man or you're out of here. That's the way he treated me. You know? So <laughs> I said, well, well what's, what's your problem? She said, I need a, a place to live and I'm not going to a motel. I said, did I say you were going to a motel? No. I said, you're going home with me. Oh, and she lit up like a lamp. You know? <laughs> so I took her, she stayed with us for about a week and then, and then she, she, um, uh, police picked her up. She was supposed to come home on Friday. This is the end of the week. And uh, they, she, the police called my wife and asked, if they get this lady out here. He says, we're doing some bad things to her. Laura says, oh, she's a little bit loose. And, you know, he, they said, well, they suspected that. So they sent her to uh, the place and then take care of the alcoholic person. Yeah, the, yeah, I know what you're talking about. And, uh, so she stayed there and they found out she was an alcoholic, she was kind of out of it. And so they sent her back to Massachusetts. That's why I say you, you gotta, you, they, they, if you do what they want to do, they'll just keep running, mm -hmm. you know, from one place or another. But you gotta stop them somewhere and find out what their problem is so they get help. Mm -hmm. Then we had another gal. Uh, she came from Denver, and the father wanted me to uh, talk to her, and she, she came to Lake with me a sister. She wanted to join the Carmelites. Mm -hmm. And I kept asking her, I said, have you got an appointment with the mother of the spirit? And she wouldn't answer me. I said, well, I'm not taking you out there. We don't have an appointment. So we get ready to eat, and I go in the bedroom and tell her, come on out, we're going to eat now. She said, oh, don't bother me, I'm praying. She'd be kneeling in front of the window, you know, <laughs> praying. So uh, finally, she kept insisting that she get out to see the Carmelites. So finally, I took her out there. I said, no, I'm going to stay here one hour. And if you are ready, I'm going to go. It wasn't very nice of her, but anyway, I, I kind of getting fed up with her because she she wouldn't do what I was asking her. And then, so I left and she left. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, the, the sister's called. Second. Not that you keep count, but if you had to guess how many people have stayed at your house. I was gonna ask oh my thing. goodness, I, I've been taking care of them for 50 some years. Uh, uh, I had one guy that uh, just recently, uh, he was living out of his car, and so I don't know when the father sent him out to the house or what, but um, he was kind of, he was a computer expert. And um, I was trying to get him a job, but he didn't want anything I could find for him. And he wanted to work with, uh, with the internet or the uh, credit card people or somebody. And um, so he, but he wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't eat with us. He had his own diet. He had fried mushrooms and he, he ate the craziest things. Fried mushrooms was on his diet? Yeah, that was on his diet. Interesting. And he kept his food in the trunk of his car. So, but finally he did get a job in, uh, in South Dakota or North Dakota or something like that. So I turned down a few. And he stayed with you? He was with you? Yeah, he stayed with us for as long as he did. Mm -hmm. Then uh, 
you can shut the machine off now if you want to, but the sisters are over a period of what, Lots. 20, 30 years, you know, you, if you took uh, two, two a year, they'd be 60. I took more than that. The last one is, a, if you want to hear it, this last one was a family that you can turn it on him. <laughs> Uh, it was a family that uh, she was pregnant and it was Christmas time and, and uh, she wouldn't say to me, she, uh, Father, our parish uh, pastor put her up in the motel for uh, four nights and, and they came back and complained to him about how, and of course he made him apologize to the secretary because they were telling the secretary what a bad place it was. And, so uh, he got, I don't know, Father uh, Kubat found out about it. And, uh, I don't know who he was connected to it. Anyway, he says, he got this uh, gal that's pregnant and it's Christmas time and, and the baby is due and they don't have any place to stay. So I said, oh, I'll take him. So I took him and, and took him to the hospital. And she had a baby the day before Christmas, or maybe two days before Christmas. And then I went out to get him to bring him home, and the police were there, and they weren't going to let her out. And of course, he insisted that, um, uh, I guess he was a husband, or he had a right to take her out. So anyway, they had a place, and so they brought him back, and they stayed about a week until I could find him a place to live. And, and a new so baby? You hmm? had a new baby at your house? You had oh, yeah, we had a, yeah, he's a little five pounds, you know. Oh. They give me the little guy, he, I could hold him in two hands, you know. I bet you didn't get much sleep that week. Oh, I, <laughs> well, I could sleep. I been, I slept, uh, during the war, I slept on boxes and or box holes or cow barns or whatever. And, uh, I never slept on flower sacks or anything like that, like some bakers did. <laughs> anyway, uh, Those might have been more comfortable than boxes. Oh, yeah, well, but my captain in, uh, during the war, he, he'd come up and he'd wake me up. I, I drove a truck, supply truck, mm -hmm. and uh, he'd say, Jim, we're moving on. And I said, okay, I'm ready. He said, you know, you're the only guy that can wake up and be ready to go. Because I, I, you know, I can sleep four hours and I'm all ready to go again, right? Uh, it, uh, that's my cycle. Well, you've been doing this for so long that you're used to it. Well, this is the last one I've done, so. And, uh, and now, you go to the bakery every day? Oh, yeah. But yeah. about 10 o'clock, right? Yeah, they, I, mean, I have a lady that uh, works for us and... I can't drive and I can't see very good, so uh, uh, she picks us up at around 8.30 and takes us right to bring us home and uh, helps my wife. My wife uh, got all hers, you know, and so she fixes breakfast and does things. She, my daughter is the only one that will help her. The boys, they, you know, it's foreign to them. They, they don't want to. They don't give very much for to help their mother, right? Of course, uh, you know, we, we know that how old people are treated by their siblings, you know, and by their children. But uh, my children are good to me, but they just don't come and help me take care of my wife. You know? except, except for Rhett? Is that, is Rhett well, Rhett is in California now. Oh, okay. So it's Mary. That, Mary is too. Yeah, and she works at Tab Tabitha at night, and so, you know, she can help us. Uh, and then she takes care of her on Saturdays when they go to Mass, and then I take her to Mass on Sunday. Sunday. And you still go to your conference meetings every week? Well, because they've asked me to come. I, see, at St. Mary's, we don't have a conference anymore. Our parish uh, pastor, he, he's one of these guys that does everything himself, you know. He just thinks we don't know how to run a, a, 
I shouldn't say that. But, uh, Sarah, you live you, in cathedral you, now. Hmm? You live in cathedral now. I live in cathedral parish now, so I go to their conference meeting and bless sacrament. So you go to two different parishes? Well, they, they combine. They, combine. they uh, oh. meet together. Oh. <laughs> yeah. really? I'm still a foreigner. <laughs> no, not anymore. Not anymore. Okay. Morning. No, what We're else good. Could come you want to get back to work? <laughs>